Hey everyone, welcome back to another TEAS Science Review. Today, we have officially began the life and physical sciences. So I have completed the human anatomy and physiology, which is the majority um, part of the TEAS. So now we have come to the other third of TEAS, which is the life and physical sciences and about the scientific investigations. Today, we're going to look at the cell. So the information in this chapter is very straightforward, nothing very complicated. You may have to you know, work a little bit to kind of memorize the information. For the cell, TEAS expects you to identify, to be able to identify basic cell parts and know the functions of the different cell parts. Based on the information in the TEAS study manual, I made this huge table listing the cell parts mentioned in the study manual and the information on their function and some notes. Okay, now let's look at the cell wall first because it's the outermost structure of the cell. The cell wall is very rigid. It provides protection and structural support and also maintains the cell shape. A quick note on the cell wall is this particular structure is only present in prokaryotic cells, in bacteria cells not all bacteria some bacteria cell wall is also present in plant cells if you look at um, allodia cells or if you look at onion cells they all have cell walls now cell wall is not present in animal cells so animal cells do not have a cell wall so animal cells uh, have a more flexible shape because there's no rigid cell wall the second structure is plasma membrane, also known as cell membrane. Cell membrane uh, separates the cell from the external environment. And it also regulates what substances can come in and out of the cell. So the, the plasma membrane is really like a door, right? Kind of like the door of your house. You can use the door to regulate who comes in, who goes out, right? That's basically the function for the, the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. And because of this kind of regulation of passage of substances, cell membrane is known to have the selective permeability. It's only permeable to certain substances. So that's what selective permeability means. The third structure is probably one of the most important structures in the cell. It's the nucleus. Nucleus houses DNA, right, which is the blueprint. So nucleus is very, very critical. You can think of nucleus as the command center, right? Because DNA determines pretty much everything in the cell. Now, the DNA regulates the synthesis of proteins, right? Uh, as well as ribosomes, because the ribosomes are made of proteins and ribosomes are made of proteins and the ribosomal RNA and the DNA has the information on um, how to synthesize both proteins and all the RNAs, including ribosomal RNA. Now, a key difference between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells, so prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells, a key difference between those two groups is that prokaryotic cells do not have a true nucleus. So there's no nucleus present in prokaryotic cells if this is prokaryotic cell, right? There's no nucleus to kind of uh, enclose the genetic material, which is DNA, right? In prokaryotic cells, the DNA, which is in a circular chromosome, is just kind of free floating in the cytoplasm. It's not enclosed by, by anything. It's not enclosed in the nucleus. So prokaryotic cells do not have a true nucleus. The next structure is a ribosome. Ribosomes carry out protein synthesis. So what happens is the, the information in DNA is transferred or copied to messenger RNA, and then messenger RNA delivers the information to ribosomes, which are present in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes will then use the information, the genetic information from RNA to make proteins. Okay, so ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. The next structure is called endoplasmic reticulum, but it's divided into two different groups. So we have a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we usually just call this ER. 
we also have a smooth E R. Now they look very differently. They also perform different functions. Rough E R. The rough appearance is because of ribosomes. So ribosomes are attached to rough ER, which gives it a studied appearance. So rough ER is responsible for protein synthesis, right? That's because the ribosomes are uh, on rough ER to make proteins. And then the proteins will go through rough ER to be further processed. So that's the function for rough ER. Now, smooth ER is quite different. Smooth ER is involved in the synthesis of lipids and carbohydrates. So you can see they are responsible for synthesizing different biomolecules. The next structure is called the Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. This is a very important structure as well because it participates in the, the, the process of making lipids and proteins. It does not directly synthesize any lipids or proteins. Instead, it involves the kind of uh, later processing. As lipid and protein molecules go through Golgi apparatus, these molecules will be modified, sorted, tagged, you know, packaged further, and then eventually distributed um, in vesicles, which will deliver these molecules to their destinations, either in the cell or outside the cell, right? Some of the cells can secrete things. The, for example, the cells in the salivary glands can secrete saliva, right? And the saliva has, uh, definitely has a proteins. And those proteins uh, will have to go through the Golgi apparatus to be processed and become the, the, the final functional proteins. So for cells that have uh, the secretion function, for example, the cells in the glands, they usually have abundant number of Golgi apparatus. Next structure is mitochondria. Now, I have seen some questions, some tease questions on mitochondria. So you might want to be very familiar with the mitochondria. This is a singular. If you see mitochondria, that's a plural. Mitochondria perform cellular respiration and ATP synthesis. It's commonly known as the powerhouse of the cell. And that's because mitochondria can break down glucose, which is known as cellular respiration. So the process of glucose being broken down by mitochondria is cellular respiration. In that process, energy is released. Glucose is a molecule that stores a lot of energy, especially between the carbon-hydrogen bond, this particular chemical bond. If you break the chemical bond, the energy stored in the chemical bond will be released. And this is how the cell gets energy, gets its fuel, right? By breaking down glucose using mitochondria. Now, the energy is released, but the cell may not need the energy right away, right? So the cell has to think of a way to store the energy temporarily until it needs the energy. Now, this is where ATP comes in. Think of ATP as a rechargeable battery. When glucose is broken down, energy is released, the cell will store the energy in ATP. So basically, it synthesizes ATP and put energy in ATP. And once the cell needs energy, then the cell can break down ATP and release that energy. So that's kind of the job for mitochondria, cellular respiration and make the rechargeable battery for the cell. Now, since mitochondrion is related to energy production, and cell metabolism, it's usually more abundant in cells that have very high energy demand. For example, muscle cells and neurons, because those cells use a lot of uh, energy. Next structure is acetyl skeleton. So acetyl skeleton kind of uh, performs different functions. And one of the main ones is it helps in the transfer of materials and uh, the movement of the whole cells. So things move right inside the cell. For example, vesicles 
the little, I like to think of them as little trucks inside the cells, the vesicles transport things. And uh, when vesicles transport, vesicles need to move, right? Maybe from this end of the cell to another end of the cell, the vesicles need to move. And this is done uh, by subtle skeleton. And also, um, subtle skeleton aids the movement of the whole cell, the entire cell. We have some unicellular organisms. They are only made up just one cell. That's what unit means, right? Unit means one. So the whole organism is just one cell. For example, amoeba, right? Amoeba is unicellular organism. So for amoeba to move, it requires subtle skeleton. So usually subtle skeleton is different kinds of proteins, uh, protein fibers. So when those proteins contract, uh, it allows the cell to move or allows certain components inside the cell to move. For example, flagella. Flagella is kind of like a big tail that allows unicellular organisms to move. Now, so in human bodies, we have sperm cells, right? How do sperm move, right? Because once the sperm are delivered in the female body, it really have, have to uh, travel pretty long, right? To get to the fallopian tubes to try to fertilize the egg. So how do those sperm cells move? It's all because of the flagella, right? The tail and the tail is made of a bunch of uh, subtle skeleton components. Now, muscle cells, muscle contractions uh, are dependent on two different proteins, actin and myosin. When they interact, this will lead to muscle contraction, skeletal muscle contraction. Now, actin and myosin are part of the cytoskeleton. Next structure is a lysosome. So lysosome um, is involved in digestion and recycling of uh, worn out cell materials. Lysosome contains um, enzymes that are pretty strong in breaking down molecules. So lysosome can digest micromolecules and also lysosomes can recycle worn out organelles, right? After the organelles are digested, the components can be reused. Next structure, vesicles and vacuoles. In the T's study manual, it only, list, only lists vacuoles. Uh, but I want to add vesicles in there because the vesicles are very important in transporting things uh, inside the cell. But they perform similar functions, you know, transport and storage, especially vacuoles. Uh, for example, in plant cells, there is a big central vacuole. And this structure can store a lot of water. It can store sugars, right? it can store even toxins. The last structure is not mentioned in the T's manual, but I just want to add it in here because it's important for plant cells. It's important for plant metabolism. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are structures in plant cells that perform photosynthesis, right? Chloroplasts can um, take in sunlight to use the energy in the sunlight to make sugar and particularly glucose, right? Glucose is a carbohydrate. So this is a how plant cells can make their own food. Okay, practice problems. I made this uh, kind of matching question. This is not the form of T's questions, but I want you to get as much practice as you uh, as possible. So I make a matching question so that you can um, kind of go over the functions for six important cell structures. All right, now uh, I'm sure you need some time to go through everything. So you can just pause the video before I review the answer. All right, number one, genetic information is stored in which of the following cell organelles? Genetic information is in the form of a DNA and DNA is stored in the nucleus. Correct answer is E. Number two, which of the following cell organelles uses the genetic information in messenger RNA to synthesize proteins? Oh, there's a typo there. Synthesize. Correct answer is ribosome, right? That's the job for ribosome. Number three, which of the following cell organelles do you expect to be present in large amount in cells with a high energy requirement, such as skeletal muscle cells? Energy, the powerhouse, that's mitochondria, B. Number four, which of the following cell organelles generates ATP? 
ATP is the rechargeable battery, right? Which cell organelle is involved in energy production? Mitochondria, right? So I was trying to kind of, I was trying to trick you guys. So I actually have uh, mitochondria as the answer for two questions. Number five, which of the following cell organelles modifies, sorts, and tags proteins before they become the final protein product and are sent off to intracellular locations or outside the cell? So this is the job for the Golgi apparatus. Right. After the proteins are synthesized, the proteins go through the Raffiar for a little bit processing, right? And then the proteins will enter the Golgi apparatus to be modified, to be sorted, and there might be some tags added to the proteins to indicate where they need to go. Um, so all those things will be done by the Golgi apparatus. Number six, some harmful substances cannot enter the cell and have an impact on the cell. Which structure keeps these substances from entering the cell? Remember which structure is the door of your house? that controls the in and out of people, that's going to be the plasma membrane or cell membrane. It regulates the passage of substances, substances in and out of the cell. All right, so that's the chapter for the cell. Good job, guys.